Vancouver for Vancouver Point Grey. Honourable Speaker, I understand why the Premier wants to change the topic. The allegations. <laughs> The allegations against New Coast Realty are shocking, Honourable Speaker. They include that New Coast Realtors were trained to deceive clients about property value so the company could sell the properties not once, but twice for two commissions. They include that the Realtors were allegedly trained to deceive clients about the need for a fake buyer's bonus that was actually going back to the client's own Realtor without the client's knowledge. That's fraud, Honourable Speaker. Former New Coast realtor uh, John Zhu told the media, quote, sometimes the owner wanted us to do something illegal to make more money, unquote. A firm of 445 realtors, they advertise themselves as the largest realty firm in the city of Vancouver. Allegations they were schooled in fraud. Former realtors alleging they were told to break the law. And the regulator says they won't suspend the firm's license and they won't audit all of the past transactions. Honorable Speaker. We've written to the police. We'll table those letters. Will the Premier write to the police as well? Yeah. Madam Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, we have taken action when it comes to shadow flipping, and um, we are. Uh, the members will see the results of that in the next in the next week or so. We are, though, also waiting um, and watching very carefully as we wait to receive the report, the final report, because this needs to be done well, it needs to be done thoughtfully, it needs to be done properly if we're going to protect people in making sure that they, when they make that most important purchase of their lives, they are doing it with someone who is behaving ethically and in their best interests in all cases. Here's what the, here's what the Real Estate Council has said so far. They wrote to say that they, um, they share Council's view that maximum fines and penalties need to be increased to allow a greater and more meaningful range of monetary consequences. And the author of the letter says, I expect the IAG will make a number of recommendations pertaining to penalties in its final report, ensure a robust system that not only punishes those who are caught, caught but functions as a deterrent, deterrence for those who are considering actions or activities that contravene the Act and the rules. We are looking forward to seeing the final results of that report. As I said, if we don't feel like it's strong enough, we will certainly do more because we want to ensure that people are protected in this province, that home buyers are protected in this province, and we want to make sure that people who aren't doing the right thing, people who are driven by greed, suffer severe penalties for doing so. Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Well, while the Premier has been waiting, while she's been watching, not a single rule has changed. And not only that, let me tell you, let me give the Premier an update what's been happening while she's been waiting and while she's been watching. New Coast has been in the news since February with allegations of reprehensible conduct. But the Real Estate Council didn't feel they were worth investigating until they got an audio tape of an alleged how-to session in fraud, Honourable Speaker. Now, is the Premier content to let things play out as they have? with consumers losing confidence in realtors in BC, hardworking realtors who follow the rules? Or will she join us in asking the police to investigate the serious fraud allegations involving this firm? Madam Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you. This, uh, by the way, the, the investigation that's happened um, is, the, is the result, uh, and this is in the letter from, that I've quoted from earlier, is the result of a request from the Superintendent of Real Estate who works for the Minister of Finance. This investigation and this work that's being done was initiated in part by the government itself because we want to get to the bottom of this and we want to make sure that we are protecting home buyers in the most important investment that they will ever make. We are also working with the City of Vancouver and other governments across the region to, make to deal with issues where, as, where we can on occupancy, nobody wants to live in a hollowed out neighbourhood, on issues of uh, speculation, to see what we can do around that, and on density. And I would note that the member opposite, who just raised the question, who often talks about housing prices, 
does not support increased density in his own riding. He is fighting rental housing. He is fighting that housing that would be available to a much broader range of people. And while he stands up and he says he wants affordable housing in the city of Vancouver, he wants it everywhere else but the neighbourhood that he represents.